Principles of bioassay. What is bioassay and when should we use it? What is the importance of bioassays? So let's say you have two drugs, two similar looking drugs. One is antihypertensive and another one is hypertensive. Both the drugs have different compositions, different pharmacological actions. But how would you differentiate amongst them? So, the answer for the question is bioassay. Bioassay is a technique which is used to differentiate the active principle const active uh, principle, or you can say the concentration-based difference among the different preparations. It is used to estimate the potency, the effect of any compound, so as to compare it with its standard that is established in the market or an unknown compound or test an unknown compound with respect to its potency, potency and efficacy. So what is bioassay? Bioassay is nothing but it is a summation of the words biological assay. That means that assay means to test the potency. So, testing the potency of any given drug of any unknown crest compound using a living tissue is bioassay. So, estimation of potency of an active principle in the unit quantity of preparations or measurement of concentration of substance in a preparation using biological method is known as bioassay. The principle behind bioassay is the principle to compare the test sample with the international standard preparation of the same to evaluate the concentration required to produce the same biological effect as produced by standard. So, the principle suggests that we are comparing test sample with the standard preparation of the same to evaluate the concentration required to produce same biological effect as produced by the standard. So we are comparing test with the standard. Standard is a formulation which is established in the market for comparing the potential of standard with it. What is the importance or advantages of bioassays? Bioassays are used to determine the potency of any compound. So, so as to ascertain the potency, we use bioassay. For ascertaining the potency, it acts as a quantitative part of screening procedures. Second, standardization of preparation so as to achieve specific pharmacological effect. So, we have an unknown compound. For example, we have an unknown compound. We don't know what is the activity or what is the pharmacological activity of that compound. So, we go for bioassays. By using bioassays, we can know that what is the uh, what is the pharmacological activity of that compound. So, let's take an example for explaining this. Uh, so, we are screening an antihypertensive drug. Like, uh, like we are screening a compound that does it possess an antihypertensive effect or not. So, with the term antihypertensive, we immediately recognize that antihypertensive means the drug has a potential to relax the tissue. So we'll do what? We'll use a tissue, a specific tissue, a hard tissue in the uh, in the in the tube, in the in the tube having simulated conditions of the body, which we use in bioassays, and we provide that tissue all the simulated conditions that are useful for a tissue to be uh, in uh, to be in a, to be in a life condition for its existence. After that, we'll, we'll insert or inject an, a, con, a contracting agent within, within that tube only, having that tissue within it. So, after the tissue gets contracted, we'll insert our unknown compound within that uh, tube. So, now, there may be two conditions as the conclusion. A. The contracted tissue do not get relaxed or no effect is seen. So, we can conclude that the compound does not possess any of antihypertensive potential or any of relaxing potential, any vasodilatory potential. But, where on the other hand, 
we are on the other side if that contracted tissue get relaxed by inserting or injecting that compound that will lead to conclude that the compound possess a vasodilatory effect the compound con contains a relaxing potential so we have an opportunity in this field now so we can screen antihypertensive potential in, in using in vivo models of the same compound now now a second point comes the first point is potential second point is standardize the preparation so as to achieve pharmacological effect as i have explained to uh, you to it this is known as standardization of the preparation so as to achieve pharmacological effect now help in diagnosis of medical condition so what do we mean by the this term we meant to say that if we are if we are diagnosing any medical condition like if we are diagnosing pregnancy so we can determine the concentration of gonadotropins within that sample of urine or uh, in while diagnosing the condition of pregnancy and pregnancy is a medical condition here so now when to perform it when to perform bioassay so yes when the active principle of the drugs are unknown we can perform bioassays or when the when we cannot isolate the active principles of the drug we can perform bioassays for example insulin or pituitary extract when we have to uh, isolate or we have to know the, uh, about insulin or pituitary extract within the preparation the principal drug we can go for bioassay Second, the chemical method is either too complex, or unable, unavailable, or insensitive, or requires a higher dose. For example, in in the cases of acetylcholine, and mostly in the cases of insulin, where rapid sensitivity is required. Third is chemical composition is unknown. When the chemical composition is unknown. Uh, for example, in long-acting thyroid stimulants, where we have to know the chemical composition, uh, we can go for bioassays. Next is when the available quantity is very less. Bioassay actually needs a very little amount of concentration. Again, we require very little amount of concentration to be to screen the potential or effect pharmacological effect of any uh, given compound. So we can go for we can opt bioassay for uh, evaluating the pharmacological action of any compound with uh, very within a very less quantity. Next is to measure drug toxicity. So as I said, we can access, assess the pharmacological activity. We can assess the toxicity of the of that compound too. By by going with that bioassay procedures, and at last but not the least, the bioassay procedure within itself is very accurate. It is very precise. It gives us reproducible results. But depending upon the method that we are using, and depending on the method that we are using, and the selection profile of specific tissue that we are using. The specificity of tissue is very important when we consider bioassays. So we should, we must consider specific tissue for specific pharmacological activity. So, for example, for uh, evaluating the vasodilatory effect or uh, for screening antihypertensive drug, we must go for aortic tissue or heart preparations for evaluating. Um, when I say diarrheal activity, we, we, we must go for ileum tissue and that uh, also is uh, the, the, the PSS, the physiological salt solution which we are using is also becomes a determining uh, factor for uh, bioassays. For example, uh, for uh, the cardiac preparation uh, tissues, we use crab ringer solution. For ileum preparations, we use thyroid solutions and so on. So now the basic question which arises to our mind, the very important question which arises uh, frequently in our mind that what is the difference between in vivo, ex vivo, in vitro and in silico. So the in, vivo, in vivo activity means that we are performing the activity within the body of animal. So let's say this is an intact animal, so we'll be performing the activity within that animal. The animal may be rat, mice, rabbit, 
hamster guinea pig or any animal which is used as an experiment animal in the labs in vitro activity in vitro activity means that we are performing the experiment outside the body of the animal where the tissue is not live tissue is not live is an important term in in vitro preparations in vitro assays in these assays we use test tubes petri dishes microplates for performing experiments we homogenize the tissue and uh, and continue our experiments on that homogenized tissues by adding reagents and chemicals to it now in ex vivo studies in ex vivo studies we these are also performed outside the body of the animal but here the condition is different from in vitro in vitro we had tissue but the tissue was not live but here the tissue has to remain live it must have life in it so as to perform the practical so we provide the tissue with the simulated condition that are required in the body like nutrients ph temperature aeration uh, oxygen supply these are all the requirements which are required which are need to be fulfilled for uh, keeping the tissue live within a specific um, within a specific tube where the tissue is kept so this is about ex vivo where the where the experiments are conducted over a tissue outside the animal body but the tissue needs to be in a live condition now coming to in silico activity in silico assays in silico assays uh, as now uh, the generation is growing and uh, updating it uh, itself with the technology very very soon and, uh, and and at a very higher pace so we have to go for computed studies so and also with the decreasing manual with uh, so as to combat the manual power or or resources or financial issues Are, are securing time and time consumption and reducing the cost we go for in silico studies in in silico studies we perform the drug discovery studies not in the chemical chem chemistry lab where we need test tubes or uh, beakers we need nothing now we need only a computer with the software from which we can screen or evaluate or select our heads and optimized compounds uh, on which we can uh, to which we after after uh, after developing that compound we bind that compound to specific proteins and receptors and uh, check for uh, the availability uh, the affinity of that compounds and after that uh, the compounds are procured from some uh, some institutions or some higher uh, laboratories or uh, uh, centers uh, and then these compounds are uh, are evaluated for their pharmacological actions so i hope in vivo ex vivo in vitro and in silico are uh, clear the concept is clear to you now